Well, you know, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. In this bulletin, investigation against six police officers complete. Chartered flight claims baseless, says AG. And countering human trafficking important. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. The Fiji police has investigated or completed investigation against six police officers who allegedly planted a bag containing methamphetamine in a vehicle. Acting Police Commissioner Rusiate Tundrabu says they have transferred the file to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution who will sanction the charges. Tundrabu assures the force will only lay charges once a green light is given by the DPP. A DPP sanction that this is the right chance to be done. So it the file is uh, brought back to us and then we formally charge uh, those uh, suspects. So we do the investigation and then we recommend the options that we have. But DPP view and then he'll sanction the right charge and it is brought back and then our police officers charge them. The investigators, eh? they do that. The government is in favor of local bank having a large footprint in the country. FBC News believes that HFC and Fiji National Provident Fund are looking at buying the Westpac Bank's Fiji operations from Kina Securities. Westpac Banking Corporation sold its Pacific arm, including Fiji, to Kina Securities based in Papua New Guinea last year. It's believed the sale is being executed for a reported 646.4 million Fijian dollars. Economy Minister Aya Said Kayum says whether it's HFC or any other institution, they will have a much bigger share in the financial market. But from an overall economic perspective, um, we would like to see um, a hundred percent owned um, bank uh, in Fiji have a much larger share of the market. FBC News has sent questions to the HFC Bank, Kina Securities, and the FNPF on the matter. Attorney General Aya Said Kayum has rubbished claims that he chartered a flight to Singapore for his medical treatment. Said Kayum left Fiji on a Fiji Airways flight. Speaking to FBC News from Singapore, the Minister for Economy says claims that he chartered a flight are baseless and mere conspiracy theories. He's also uh, confirmed that airline tickets were paid for by him personally and no taxpayers funds were used so they seem to have be having uh, very vivid imaginations and conspiratorial type of stories uh, or thinking uh, they're not really contributing to the country uh, and they obviously don't uh, seem to have an understanding or they have not tweaked to how the fiji first government operates under the leadership of a prime minister uh, we obviously very much built on uh, having proper accountability and transparency. Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Economy, Makereta Konrote, has resigned. The Public Service Commission in a statement says they have accepted Konrote's resignation. Her resignation comes in effect from March 15th. She plans to apply her economic expertise to take on new challenges in the near future. Shiri Gander, the head of fiscal policy and former head of treasury, will act as the Permanent Secretary for Economy from March 16th. With an increase in migrants coming to our shores for employment and to invest in the economy, it's critical that the relevant authorities identify possible cases of human trafficking. These experts in human trafficking cases have been urged to engage in constructive discussions, share their opinions and best practices during this countering human trafficking training in Nandi. The training will allow participants to enhance their capabilities in border management, referral procedures, investigation 
investigation and prosecution of perpetrators to provide or provide victim support services and strengthen partnership opportunities. You all play a vital role in our efforts to combat human trafficking as a nation. The training today will provide you with the necessary skills, indicators and knowledge to be able to restore the human rights of victims who had been trafficked. Mana Coffee, previously known as Weta Coffee Fiji, has launched its new identity at its flagship cafe and kava bar in Suva. The coffee shop will now be using Fijian-made beans in support of the local thriving coffee culture. Director Moe Fisher says previously they used beans from a New Zealand-based company, but under the new agreement, they will be using beans from Nandi-based South Pacific Coffee. Fisher says, like any other business, Mana Coffee also has its shares of struggles because of the COVID-19 crisis. COVID has been hard for everybody. And um, we are very grateful that the super, supermarket is still quite vibrant. And we should never ever take that for granted because um, others, others are hurting more. Due to an increase in papaya and pineapple production, the agriculture sector is now packaging them as dried fruits for the international market. The production has increased to 4,000 and 7,000 metric tons, respectively. Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the commodity will greatly help so, farmers and will also help generate income so, for the sector. Uh, the newly launched dried pawpaw and pineapple candy will also be available in our local stores. Thank you, Agro Marketing Authority, and also food processes for continues in expanding and processing and valuating our primary commodities into products so that we can expand and grow the market, get new people, uh, new generation, and also push this product into new geographical space. People can expect good food at this Saturday's Today FM Thurston Family Market Day. 27-year-old Navaniel Molamola, the owner of Taco Boy, who specializes in Mexican food, is one of the many vendors who will be part of the event. Starting his own business at a young age, Molamola says the platform will guide him to move in the right direction. I'm just used to working in uh, uh, five-star resorts and all these things. That's where I get most of my experience and uh, able to learn a lot of things. Eh? So right now, since the borders are closed, I just uh, I had a choice just to look at how, on how I'm doing business. Up ahead, Digicel teams up with Fiji FA and Nadruga ready for new season. Oyer na mo na na dinu ni ano ba siya ni mataka? Merso sumi da kano lama din na kilo bikron. Sa kano ngao na mitar mo bina na rabo sa ngay kapa lalo mataka na mo ni. Dalo bina oyer mo meliki. Bulre oyer mo Samuel Samuli. Namay kikir rao ano ba mataka? Mo ni ti kilo bikron buka. Ni mo ti ni kalim na mo ni ti mo ano kina ti na kaloko. En radio Fiji One nandom mo ibiti. Pina pina na mataka dan rama na singabo. As of last night, Fiji's premier football competition is now known as the Digicel Premier League. This after Digicel Fiji sealed a three-year deal with the Fiji Football Association worth $2.85 million. Talima Terukula reports. The official handshake confirming the partnership and Digicel now owning the naming rights of all Fiji FA competitions, including futsal. With this partnership, we do not only get the Fiji but we also participate in the development of football in Fiji. We are going to be part of the uh, primary, second, primary and secondary school competitions. We are going to be part of the regional club championships. We are going to be part of the futsal championship. The sponsorship trickles right down to each district. Our districts have always benefited uh, with FIGFA. We, uh, we start there. Uh, for their uh, Premier League and everything, we give them $5,000 each to start preparing and everything. They'll still continue to get it. And even uh, the uh, under-19, under-16, 
we pay for the coaches, we pay for the players, we pay for the transport and everything. So this will enhance and everything and get it bigger and, and better with the Digicel. The senior competitions is now known as the Digicel Senior Men and Women respectively. The Super League is now called the Digicel Super League. And the national teams are now named the Digicel Men, Women and Under 16, 19 respectively. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Former national football striker Osea Vakatalesao will be turning a new leaf in the Digicel Premier League this season. After being suspended from playing all levels of football in 2017, Vakatalesao made a strong comeback last year for the Nandranga football team and helped guide the side back to the Premier Division. Now the 37-year-old Bar native plans to help his side remain in the top tier in years to come. The journey to making it back to the top has not been easy for Osea Vakatalesao, but he persevered through it. What has made me change is to work hard. Work hard uh, during uh, training time. Uh, working hard, uh, it pays off during the game. Leicester's Kelechi Ihinacho stepped up superbly in the absence of a number of injured teammates to earn them a potentially important draw, one all draw with Burnley. A smashing victory by Australia has made it 2-1 to the Black Caps in the five-match T20 series. Glenn Maxwell doing most of the damage last night, even getting one over his good mate. A moist northerly wind flow prevails over the Fiji group. The forecast is for some cloudy periods with showers over most places. That's FBC News Now. Join us again at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fg. Take care and good afternoon. हमारे खूबसूरत देश फिजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप